Good morning, evening, or wherever you are, whatever time it is. Um, on the Twitterverse the other day when I was talking about my latest uh, print and play project, um, someone made the comment, oh, making bags is easy if you know how to make bags. Well, actually, making bags is just easy even if you don't know how to make bags. Now, this is the bag that I made for uh, the prototype of trains on a train. There's like four of these, one per player, and this is the draw bag. Think of it as a draw pile of cards, except it has tiles in it. Um, that's pretty bland. So yesterday, I started fooling around on the PC and got an open source image from somewhere and doctored it a bit. I think that, I think that looks a little nicer. So I'm going to make some more bags and I'm going to show you guys how to do it because it is easy. And even if you're not making bags for trains on a train, although why wouldn't you? Um, you've probably got games that you would like some component bags for. They're like, you know, they're a nice way to store things. So um, stick with me and we'll make some little bags like this and one bag like this. Um, and you can see it's actually a fairly straightforward thing to do. I've been sewing for ages. I'm a sailor and make my own sails and actually worked as a sail maker for a while in my 20s. So I do know how to sew. Um, and this is very simple. Anyone can do it. And you know what? Pretty satisfying. So, let's get going. So the first thing you're going to need to do is cut out the cloth for your bags. I actually buy a roll of calico sort of linen-y basic beige cloth um, for all sorts of little projects. Um, and bag making is good. And you can get this set like your local cloth dealer. When you measure something, it needs to be bigger than... Um, what you're making because there's a thing called seam allowance where when you do a bit of a row of stitching everything gets slightly smaller because you the real estate the stitches take up and the hem that is behind it so i've made this longer by the width of the ruler and a little bit wider than the bag i'm copying and twice as long with the bags we're making will have a fold in the middle so we only have to sew down each side not across the bottom you'll need a sewing machine and the first thing you need to do when you get your sewing machine is ask the person who owns it to give you a, a bit of a tip. So the first thing I do is sew a zigzag on my machine before I start any job and make sure that the, the tensions on the thread are even. Then the next tip that's really useful is making sure that when you remove your job that the tension lever, which is moving up and down here I'm pointing to, is at the top because otherwise the next time you start sewing your sewing machine will de-thread the needle, which is very annoying. The, the little lever will go up and the thread will get pulled out of the needle and you'll have to re-thread it and that's annoying. But back to the bags. The first thing we're doing here is we're just hemming what would be the top and the bottom of the bag. Remember there's a fold in the middle so if we put a hem on either end of the bit of cloth we've cut out um, and fold it over so that they meet that will be the open end of the bag and where the fold is will be the bottom of the bag. So basically here I am just doing a zigzag because quite like zigzag stitches, it's a sail maker thing, but a straight stitch would be fine um, to make that hem. Now what I'm doing is going up the side of the bag on each side, just with a straight stitch, backwards and forwards at the end so it doesn't come undone. Once again, the person that owns the sewing machine will be able to show you how this works. Like it's worth getting a little help from them. Then when you turn the bag inside out, this is what you've got. The, the, the seams that you've done are on the inside so they can't be seen and there's the fold on the bottom um, and I'm just turning the top over into a cuff because I'm planning to put an eyelet in this. This is one of the bags that in trains on a train will hang off your wrist that your score tiles go in. Um, so basically I'm turning the top over into a, like a double fold cuff I guess um, and we'll just leave it like that and that'll be a nice bag to put things inside. Now all of that, if someone has a sewing machine and doesn't mind giving you a little bit of instruction on it before you start, all of that is doable by pretty much anyone, I think. Now, we're doing the bigger bag, and this bag will have a drawstring through the top. So, drawstrings, I think, work best when they pop out of the bag at both corners at the top, not just one. So, I'm doing a 45 degree fold, uh, which I'm sewing down on each of the four corners, so that when I thread the drawstring through, there's like a little opening for the string to come out on each of the corners and you'll see what I mean later. I'm just doing a short straight stitch to hold this fold down. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably just iron it down, but then you might find when you thread the, the string, the drawstring through, it would get hooked up. Um, and threading, you know, drawstrings through 
you know, waistbands on shorts and things like that. And that's annoying if it like gets hooked up. So we're gonna make this as easy as possible just by quickly sewing these four corners down. Now, the next thing we do is we fold the top over, which will make the pocket that the drawstring will go through. Once again, like the small bag, this is actually the top of the bag and the far end of the cloth, which is just out of shot to the bottom right, is the bottom end of the bag. We'll do the same thing there. So here we go, once again, just a straight stitch. Interestingly, if you need to help feed the thread through the, the, um, the foot of the machine, which is the bit the needle's bouncing in and out of, I like the point of your little pair of scissors or a quick unpick is a good way to help the cloth through. Occasionally it'll get caught and won't want to move and you can just use the, the thread of the scissors, the point of the scissors to just help the thing through without putting your fingers too near the needle. So you can see we've made a little pocket here. You can see the two ends are open with the little 45 degree bit and a bit later on you'll see us thread a, um, a, a drawstring through it and I'm just basically trimming off all the loose ends here which I tend to not do, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy with most things. So here we are doing the same thing at the other end, folding it over for the drawstring, and then doing a straight stitch uh, uh, along that fold. Um, you know, the fold has to be big enough to, to, for the size of the string you're going to go, you, you're wishing to put through, and it should be comfortably bigger. Maybe you should be able to imagine putting five lots of thread or string through the pocket, because it's gonna gather up when you pull it tight and you need room for it to do that. So here we are, once again, we fold the two sides of the bags together. Notice that the hem we've done is on the outside. There, I've just pointed it, and we're gonna sew down each edge like we did on the other bag so that when this is turned inside out, all of our loose edges will be on the inside of the bag where you can't see them. Wow, this bit's exciting. I wonder if I should have edited this out. But anyway, here it is, just for the sake of um, repetition, a little bit of backwards at the beginning to tie the thread in, and then we just do a straight stitch along the edge of the bag where we do a little bit of backwards again to tie the thread in. Once again, making sure that the tension bar is up on the machine when we like lift the foot and draw the cloth away so we don't accidentally de-thread the needle. And we do the other side. I should have sped this part of the video up. You've seen this before, but maybe you want to see it again. I don't know. I've left it in here because like, why not? Once again, straight thread. You'll notice that once again, the hem is on the outside at the moment. When we turn the bag inside out, all of this loose furry stuff on the edge of the hem will be um, tucked inside. So here we go. I think we're turning the bag inside out now. Grab the bottom, pull it around. And there we have a bag and you can actually see pretty easy to thread this, the string through. And then I just tie the two ends in a knot. I'm being a yachty, it's a, this is a figure of eight knot. They look nice. The reason we use them on a knot, on a yacht rather, is because they don't jam. You can always get them undone if a, if a knot gets pulled hard up against a fitting by a flapping sail or something. But um, that's an attractive looking knot. So it's good for a bag. Okay, the next thing I did is I actually ironed all the bags. Once again, use the person, find, find some help from a person who does some ironing to help you with this because it just means that the transfer we're gonna put on um, has a very flat surface to stick to. Um, and it also sort of helps you judge the size of things. You'll notice I'm putting it in the bottom third of the bag rather than the top because if you put it up the top, when you draw the bag closed, the graphic that you've put on will all get scrunched up with the string. So you wanna have the graphic like more towards the bottom of the bag. Um, where you put a graphic on an item of clothing or a bag or something is actually quite important because when it's being worn or used, you don't want your graphic to like disappear. Now, basically it says use 45 seconds to 30 seconds of pressure with the, with the, um, the, the t-shirt transfer. So I haven't sped this up. This is about how long I took on it. And as you can see, you let it cool down. And then once it's cool, you grab the corner, which is difficult if you've got terrible short fingernails like mine, and you peel it off. And ooh, here we go. This is always exciting because sometimes this doesn't work and it's a bit heartbreaking. But on this occasion, we have a nice transfer on a bag um, and that's very satisfying. There it is. A bag to put parts in with a label on it, all of which I think is pretty doable by um, 
someone who's a bit crafty at home and need, you know with a need to create some things now the small bags i put a, what's called a grommet in some people would call this an eyelet but you don't really call them eyelets until they get quite large maybe 20 millimeters in hole diameter um, you'll need a hole punch which i just held up and an eyelet set you can get these from your hardware store or you can in australia and they're like a few dollars this is not an expensive bunch of stuff that i've got here i have a little block of wood that i use to um as, as a, uh, a punch, a wad punch to, to like do this work on. And you punch a little hole in the top. Then you um, put the bottom half of the eyelet set on with the, the, sorry, the grommet set with the grommet in it. And you put the cloth on the top and then you put the washer that um, is the other half of the grommet on top and you give it a thump with a hammer with the other half of the eyeleting tool, grommeting tool, and you're done. I think I must have got a splinter there or something, actually. Welcome to my workshop, by the way. Bang, 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 bang. There we are. So we hold this up, and there's a nice grommet in our little bag. Here's what it all looks like finished. If you decide to print out trains on a trains and make some little bags for it, this is what it should look like, roughly. Um, if you, I hope you're into print and play games. They're a cool thing.